In this video, we're going to be checking out the new release for Kill Team, the new starter set, Hive Storm. Hello everybody and welcome to the Esoteric Order of Gamers. My name is Peter and as you know on this channel I cover a huge range of tabletop games. That's board games, tabletop miniatures games, all kinds of fantastic games. Absolutely love them, played them all my life and I hope you like them too. Of course you do, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this channel. Today I'm going to be looking at Hive Storm. This is the new edition of Kill Team, Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team by Games Workshop. So I just got this now. I'm going to do some videos about this in the future as we go along and I get to play it and paint it and stuff like that. But at the moment this is just the unboxing of the new set. I want to show you what you get in it. It's quite heavy. There's a lot in there. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Now before I get started, you know this already, but I get this stuff for free from Games Workshop so I can show it to you. I don't charge for these videos and my opinions are always my own. Let's get started and the first thing I'm going to do is start with a whinge. Yes! <laughs> now, if you don't like me whinging, just skip on a bit and you'll get past the whinging bit. I might even put little um, bookmarks in the bottom so you can get past the whinge. But I am going to whinge about one thing and that is this box. I've said this before, I don't like flimsy boxes for products that cost a fortune. And these cost a lot of money, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And now it seems, after the Skaven Tide release and this release, it seems that, that major starter set boxes are now this flimsy cardboard. Look at it. It bends and it bows. I've already got a crease down the bottom and a dent where the plastic has come through and it, it's sort of bowed a bit in the bottom. I'm really, really not happy about this. I, in fact, this is the thing that's annoyed me the most about Games Workshop for ages. They make good products. The prices are incredibly, incredibly high, especially in Australia and New Zealand. That's all frustrating. But I'm really annoyed at the cutting of corners here and we're not getting decent boxes. And the reason I'm annoyed about it is because I like to store my games for decades. I like to keep them. I've got a huge collection over there of Games Workshop games going right back to the 80s. And I want better quality boxes that last the test of time. And I'm getting these already with damage in them, with scuff marks and creases and dents. Please, Games Workshop, go back to solid boxes. You don't have to do it for every single release, but you should do it for these major releases that cost a lot of money. Okay, I've said that, <laughs> made it clear. Now, if you've skipped my whinge, we're going straight to the unboxing now. I just whinged a bit about the box, but don't worry. If I can just interrupt my own video very, very quickly, I've created an app. It's taken me years and years to make and I'm really, really proud of it. It's called Tabletop Codex. If you go to the website tabletopcodex.com, you can learn all about it. But basically, I call it the ultimate tabletop game rulebook app. It's fantastic for learning your favourite games and also for referring to them during a game so you can find rules answers quickly. So check out the website tabletopcodex.com. So here we go, Hive Storm, the new Kill Team set. Let's have a look inside the box. And of course, you get plastic to start with, lots and lots of plastic. We've got two Kill Teams in here. We have the Vespid Stingwings, who are from the Tau Empire, Tau Empire Alien Auxiliaries. And they've got wings and they're like giant bugs. And then we've also got the Tempestus Aquilons, the Elite Astro Militarium Drop Troops. Um, they're shown on the sides of the box, as you can see. So, lots of plastic. We've got one, two, that's Vespids. We've got a whole lot of wings for the Vespids here, it looks like. Uh, this looks like a whole lot of those um, drop packs for the other guys. And then some terrain. And, you know, nice terrain here. This looks pretty cool. Um, they're buildings. They're not huge, of course, but you know, these are. They, I think these buildings will work better than the original Kill Team ones because the Kill Team ones from the first set, or I should say the second edition, um, they were like sort of cathedral type ones and they just didn't have that height to make them feel like they were cathedrals. But these feel like more like normal buildings, so it should work a bit better. But a generous amount of terrain, which is good. These look pretty cool. Oh, I've got lots of painting to do, don't I? This is uh, it's good because Kill Team is all about terrain 
and you know sneaking from spot to spot and there's a lot here and one thing we already know about this new addition is that you can actually purchase terrain as part of your equipment when you set up your kill team so that's something a little bit different and justifies even more terrain and here is some of that there it is this is like barricades and things so you can probably purchase these before you start now an interesting thing here is you look at the measuring gauge they're the same as last time except it's got numbers on them yay happy days are here again the sky is blue we don't have to worry with silly circles and triangles and squares look at that good old numbers easy to remember don't have to translate it through a symbol numbers yay I'm really happy about that. Now, I'm going to tell you the thing that I'm really not happy about. And that is, I found out that they've decided to rename the move action, reposition. What are they thinking? I'm sorry, I can't think of anything you do in tabletop miniatures games that is more fundamental than moving. You move. We've always moved. You take your figures and you move them. So who thought it was a good idea <laughs> what? to change it to reposition? So now, and also it breaks the immersion. I mean, a model moves from place to place. A, a, a piece repositions, gets placed from place to place. This is a, we're using our imagin imaginations here. These are little operatives. I hate that word too, but operatives. And they're, they're moving. We're imagining them moving. And actually, now that I say, you know, I hate them calling them operatives, and we usually call them figures and models, in a way calling them figures and models does break the immersion a bit, doesn't it? I never actually thought of that before, so there you go. So maybe operative isn't too bad. I just wish they'd come up with a word which had less syllables. But reposition, another four-syllable thing. Operative, another four syllables. <laughs> Model, two syllables. Figure, two syllables. Move, one syllable. <laughs> It's so much easier. And also, I've read some of the rules and it says, you know, reposition. What was it? There was a phrase that just sounded, using the word move, and so, I'll find it. Instead of using the word reposition instead of move, just sounded ridiculous. So I'm absolutely gobsmacked that they did that. It's not a reposition op thing. You know, you're not repositioning. You're moving. You're just moving. I know. These things aren't going to shatter the world, but it is a little bit frustrating because they wanted to simplify everything. They were talking about how they wanted to make it clearer. And changing move to reposition doesn't make anything clearer. Anyway, lots of plastic. It's pretty cool. And look, I'm impressed by the amount of, amount of terrain. Look at all that. That's a lot of terrain. I mean, you've just got the two kill teams. That's fine. But that's a generous amount of, of good terrain. So that's cool. Wish it came in a more solid box, but that's cool. Okay, what have we got next? Well, as you know, everything gets wrapped in cardboard these days. Thin cardboard to protect it. Um, this feels a bit solid, which is good. Anything that's solid and high quality is good uh, in my book. So I don't think I'm going to be able to... Yeah. Oh, there we go. And it is our board. So... I'm very happy to see this isn't a paper mat, and I'm sure you are too, because the last thing you want to do is hear me rave about paper mats again and how much I hate them. So I'm sure you're very relieved. <laughs> Either that, or you've just gone to another channel. So here's our board. Let's open it up. It is double-sided, I'm happy to see. I'm also happy to see that it's just a lovely dark grey generic playing surface. This is very cool, I approve of this. Just turn it over. That's nice. Look at that. That's pretty cool. It's got a sort of bits of rubble and smooth areas as well. That is really nice. Yep. I like that. I like it when a playing surface is not too busy because if it's too busy, I think the models get lost in it and you can't see where they are and it just feels too distracting from the game. So a nice dark grey surface like that is spot on. I like it. So down in here we have another flimsy cardboard box with stuff in it. This feels like our rule book. And underneath we've got this thing. We've got 
dice. What kind of dice are these? No, straight up boring old normal ones. Could have done something nicer with the dice, like the Necromunda dice are gorgeous. Why are these ones so crappy? Bases. There you go. So we can put that aside. Okay. What have we got? Nice little box. I mean, you could use this as a little carry box to put this stuff in. It's nice. It is flimsy. Again, it's creased and everything. This cardboard just does not stand up to any kind of treatment. I and mean, if you're getting things that are already creased, that sort of pees me off a bit when it costs a lot of money. Again, I've got to stop using this flimsy cardboard. They're saving money. And I'll tell you why, because I'm a graphic designer and I know, obviously, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? Flimsier cardboard is cheaper than thick cardboard. So they are saving money by doing that. And yet still charging the same for the game. I love a lot of stuff Games Workshop does. You know, I, I cover it all the time. I play the games, it's great, but I'm not afraid of pointing out these things where they're cutting corners too much. Anyway, so what do we have now? First we've got this strange, look, we've got just a filler thing, cardboard filler thing, and those fit into there. I guess, guess that's sort of a neat way of packaging things. Or they could have just made that box. Oh no, you know, that's fine. No, otherwise that'd be rattling around in there, wouldn't it? So that's, there you go. So we've got approved ops card pack 2024. Now, it says here, this card pack is a key supplement to the Kill Team core play experience. Inside you'll find a large deck, oh thank you, not just a deck, a large deck, thanks for telling us, <laughs> of reference cards, including TAC Ops, Victory Conditions, Mission Maps for all available kill zones and more. This is the most balanced and up-to-date way to play for all casual and serious players looking for a fun and fair game. This contains 36 cards and three fold-out leaflets, including one approved Ops Mission Pack leaflet, one approved Ops Game Sequence card, three Scouting Step cards, 12 Tech Op cards, nine Crit Op cards, what's a Crit Op? One Kill Op card, six Primary Op cards, how many Ops could we have? <laughs> no, please make it simpler. Four Map Key cards and two Mission Map leaflets. Well, there you go. Um, that's interesting. Let's have a look. Now, I'm not going to go into the rules yet because this is the first time I've unboxed it, so I don't know the new rules, but I will do another video in the future about the rules once I've had a play with them. So, uh, this is our little brochure, Approved Ops Mission Pack. This is a player versus player mission pack for head-to-head -head gameplay. There we go. The most balanced, up-to-date and in-depth version of Kill Team. So, yeah, here's our little mission op thing we me. There we go. And we've got, what's this? Kill zones. Oh, here's a little setup maps. I don't know about this leaflet thing. I mean, I preferred these on cards, but look at that. There's, there's our setups. Oh, that's, that's boarding actions. Okay, so that's using the Gallo Dark scenario, uh, scenery. So that's cool. We've got some Gallo Dark maps. That's really good. And there's using the new um, scenery. So yeah, I guess that's cool. I would have liked that on cards more than a leaflet, but can't have everything. Then we've got, oh look, there's one for uh, Beta Decima as well. More layouts. So we've got these gazillions of missions for all of these, but these apparently are the most balanced and up-to-date and non-specific kill zones, so any terrain you like. So I'm glad they've done some allowance if you want to do your own terrain and you don't want to use the official terrain. Then we've got these cards, approved game sequence. That's a pretty, yeah, that's not a very useful card, is it? Tac Ops, oh, here's the scouting of step, steps. So it looks like the same scouting system as from previous games and that you choose one of these uh, choices and then depending um, the order, uh, on the order of these choices, uh, it'll decide who goes first in the first game. So there you go. Ah, oh, little map keys. There's the Volcus. Now this is set on Volcus, this new set. Um, and that's what the new terrain will be called. There we go. Kill Ops. You start without a kill grade. As enemy operatives are incapacitated, your kill grade goes up until it reaches 5. I don't know anything about that yet. Primary Ops. Okay, this is a strange looking card. Primary Op, Crit Op, Tac Op. There's actually nothing on them. 
So I don't know how that works. Oh, here's more Cricut Ops. Okay. So these are obviously objectives. One thing they've done in this set is it looks like all the rules use this format in that it says this is the rule and these are the things that you can't do when you're executing this rule. So that's, that's probably a handy way of seeing things. I think that's pretty good. So, deck of cards. It's kind of neat. Uh, some new counters. These are interesting. There's a measure gauge on there. And where are our... This looks like they've abandoned the triangular conceal and engage markers. And these are actually much nicer because you can see they've got a little curve on them so you can attach them up next to the base of a figure, which is great because the other ones were good in that they pointed to a figure, but because they were triangular, the little corners easily got damaged. So very much approve of that change. And also, this is nice thick cardboard, I'm very happy to see. So that should last a while. That's good. Of course, we've got our book showing how we put them all these together. There's our terrain, which looks pretty cool. And we've got two books, not one, but two. That's interesting. Here's our core book. Okay, so here's our new set of kill team rules. And I won't go through all, all this in detail. As I said, I haven't read it myself yet, um, but it'll be interesting to see what they've changed. As I said, I don't, well, I get the impression from the, from the things that have appeared on the Warhammer community site that there really aren't too many in the way of changes. I think they've just explained things a lot better. Perhaps they've explained the line of sight uh, rules better and the um, engage and conceal rules better. So here's hoping. I will start reading these straight away and I'll let you know what I think. Um, that looks like a nicely designed book. Um, always good to see more women playing the hobby. That is really good. And um, yeah, so we'll check that out. And then this one appears to be devoted to Hive Storm, which is of course the new campaign series, and I'm sure we'll be seeing updates over the next year um, set on Volcus with new kill teams, etc. Um, also, it's been announced that all the old kill teams uh, profiles for those will be made available for free as PDF downloads, which is fantastic. So here we have everything about the Vespid Stingwings. Oh, this is nice, lots and lots of photos and art, which is great. And the Tempestus Aquilon kill team. Here's our new format, as you can see, for the forces. Now, again, no unit cards. I'm really disappointed to see no unit cards. Why can't we have unit cards? We just have them in the book like this. I don't know why they don't why they do that. Why don't they provide them? I guess it's just they think it's unnecessary. But I get this kind of thing, and as I've said before, I make my own unit cards, so it's another big extra step of work that I do personally, just to make it easy, and so I don't have to flip through books or photocopy books or do anything like that, or scan books, I should say. But interesting here, we've got the um, action point limit, we've got move. So what they've done, the reason they've, I think the reason that they've changed move to reposition is that the move stat is called move, and they think it's confusing if you call the move action move. You know, the moving action move as well, which it isn't because you know the two go together and it's been like this for time immemorial. And this is I love change, but this is one of those things where you don't need to change it. The moves, move action uses the move stat, it's simple. I guess they've tried to separate it by saying this is the move act, move stat, and then there's the reposition action. Anyway, uh, there's a save value here and there's wounds, so there's no group activation uh, stat anymore. Uh, which is where you activated a, uh, one model, and if it had a group activation thing, you could activate another one. I never, you know, we, it was hardly ever used. I, I hardly ever used it, so I'm glad they've got rid of that. Um, and yeah, only four stats. Um, also, if you look at the weapon stats, it's still normal and critical damage, but there's no actual critical um, effects, so that's been taken off as well. It's really simplified. I mean, I love that it's been simplified, and also. Certainly judging by these few ones, there's not too much in the way of special abilities, which is, is great. I want less special abilities. I want distinctive models that do exciting distinctive things, but not at the expense of ease of use. So uh, this is a tricky bit of design. You've got to get a model that's got a personality of its own, that ha has a particular function and does something well, 
but you don't want to define it with paragraphs and paragraphs of text that is hard to read during your game. This is our faction equipment bit. So as you can see, uh, as normal, each one of the um, units will have its own special faction equipment, um, faction rules and stuff. So I'm going to go into this in more detail in the future, as I said. I'm just giving a, an unboxing at this stage. But there you go. Hello, Peter from the future here. Um, I wasn't going to show you the built miniatures in this unboxing video, but this is me in the future and I've done them. I've not only done them, but I've also painted the entire Vespids squad. So I want to show you the built figures, the painted Vespids, and I've also painted one of the Tempestus Aqualon figures. Um, and I've built the terrain as well. So let me show you some of these cool figures. Let's start off with the Vespid Sting Wings. And this guy is the Strain Leader. Now I've just painted these in the color scheme that's on the box because I'm kind of lazy that way. And in fact, there were wing markings on here in the official uh, color scheme, but I haven't bothered with that because I want to get these out pretty quickly. But good old contrast paint came to the rescue here. And uh, there's some highlighting as well, but these are pretty easy to paint. Now I do recommend that you paint the wings separately. So it'll be much easier to do the inside of the wings if the wings aren't attached to the body, as you can imagine. And then once they're painted, you can stick them onto the body and it'll be so much easier. This guy's called a Swarm Guard. And as you can see, those wings give them a, a lovely feeling of movement and, and flying. Very cool models. This one's called a Long Sting and he's got a Neutron Rail Rifle. So he's a bit of a sniper dude. This one is called the Shade Strain. He's got a Neutron Sting, that weapon there. And you see, they wear these helmets, some of them, to communicate with their Tau leaders. This one is a Sky Blast. He's got a Neutron Grenade Launcher. I'm very tempted to actually put some more markings on the thorax there, or the abdomen, or whatever you want to call it. But for the moment, these are great. Then we've got a bunch of warriors, all in rather cool poses. I really like the alien insectoid nature of this kill team. It's very sci-fi, really nice to see. Moving away from the gothic a bit and just getting a bit more straight sci-fi, which I quite like. I mean, there's only so many skulls you can stick on things, isn't there? But uh, it's, it's nice to have some straight, hard, kind of sci-fi feeling to these aliens. Really nice. Very cool poses. And finally, they've got an oversight drone, which is a little tower drone that accompanies them on the battlefield. Now, I've only had a chance to paint up one uh, Tempestus Aqualon. As you can see, it's quite a detailed paint scheme. This is the Tempestor, which is pretty much the leader. And there's the drop pack, of course. And there's a lot of sort of straps and stuff and, and detail here. So I find these quite fiddly to paint, but I just, I'm using contrast paints helps because they flow into all the little recesses and everything. That you may want to paint these with the drop pack separately it might make it a bit easier. I haven't, I've actually built them all, so it'll be a little bit more time consuming. But uh, they come up very nicely and a nice sort of straight military feel, which I like. This one is the Grenadier. As you can see, this is just prime, so it has yet to be painted. He's carrying a melter bomb and a hot shot las pistol. This guy is a gunfighter in a very gunfighterish pose. Again, with a hot shot las pistol. This guy is a gunner with a melter carbine. He can also be built with a plasma carbine if you prefer. This marksman has a hot shot long laz. Kind of sniper figure. This figure is called a precursor. Got a tempestus dagger and a hot shot laz pistol. Then we've got some troopers. This one's got a hot shot Laz Carbine and some more troopers. This one just taking off or possibly landing. Another one. And finally, 
this one. And finally, this one I have painted up. This is the servo sentry. And there's a choice of three different weapons you can have on this one. I gave it the hot shot volley gun. Very cool. And of course the skull. Now there's some very cool terrain, of course. Now I've just primed this in black because I'll be dry brushing it up to a sort of lighter grey and then adding in details and then weathering it and doing all that stuff. That's a bit of a project. That's going to take me a little while. But it is very cool terrain. You can see it's nice and big. Check out the size of that. Nice, big, chunky, classic piece of Warhammer blasted city terrain. I really, really like that. Um, if you're really into terrain, you want to get this set because this is cool. This will probably be sold separately, I imagine, as well. Um, but that's a very impressive piece of terrain. It's got two levels, which is really, really nice. This one is also impressive. Look at that. It's got these kind of silo things built into the side. Really nice, lovely detail that's going to dry brush up beautifully. And again, it's got a, a nice level there for a nice vantage point. Two other pieces like this, which are rather lovely. I like the way this floor is cracked in the middle here. Uh, they've both got upper levels, which are cool, so we've got a nice bit of verticality to our battlefield. And a couple of classic sort of corner pieces for cover. And then there's a whole lot of bits and bobs, really, just, uh, you know, obstacles and things, stuff like this, ruined piece of, pieces of architecture, like so, um, flat pieces like this. Uh, you've got some ammo crates as well. And then some of these things you can buy as uh, equipment to use as cover, so a couple of heavy-duty cover pieces there and a couple of very mobile ones that you can carry with you as well. There's your classic normal barricades. Yet more ruined pieces for cover. Really love this emphasis on cover, it's great. There's some spiky barricades that you can also buy as part of your equipment. And they get smaller and smaller. We've got some ladders. Help you get up walls. There's a couple of communication devices. I love these little smoke grenades. Uh, grenades with smoke belching out of them. And there's some very tiny pieces. Little grenades and things and some mines and stuff like that. And finally, of course, our measurement gauge, which I'll be painting up to look nice and brassy with verdigris and stuff like that. So that's it, folks, the miniatures. You can see there's a big pack of terrain and some very, very cool miniatures. These guys paint up beautifully, these Vespids. And in fact, so do the other ones as well. It's going to take me a little longer to finish up the Aqualons, uh, but I'm very much looking forward to getting these onto, this, onto the tabletop in this great terrain, especially this lovely big piece here. Very, very cool. Well, my friends, that's what you get in a box of Warhammer Kill Team Hive Storm. And overall, I, I like the look of it. I'm impressed by the amount of terrain. The two um, kill teams in here are pretty cool. I love the insecto insectoid Vespid guys. Um, and the other ones are, are nice and sort of human. I always like it. Personally, I prefer it when you've got one sort of pretty straight up team and one weird team. If you have two weird teams, it just feels a bit over the top. I kind of feel like that in all games, really, even if you're playing something like Age of Sigma or Warhammer 40,000. Having two really weird teams go at each other is... Anyway, this is just a personal, personal thing. So I like that. I like the fact that we've got a solid board. Um, I like the fact that we've got nice, uh, good quality counters. Uh, the cards look fine. The only thing I'm not happy about is this dodgy little box. So, Games Workshop, that's the only thing you've got to fix, please. I mean, I love you to lower your prices, but you're not going to do that anytime soon. But you can give us good quality um, uh, materials for the price that we pay, which is a premium price, let's face it. But this is a premium product, um, and the miniatures look, you know, gorgeous as ever. You can't fault Games Workshop on their miniatures. They're always very, very high quality and rather beautiful. Sometimes they get a little bit too fragile for my taste, um, but these ones look fantastic. So it's a nice set, and as I said, I'm going to be talking more about Kill Team because I think it's a, a really good game. I'm really excited to see what they've done. Um, I will try and turn a blind eye from now on to the fact that they've called the move action reposition, even though it just... 
drives me insane. <laughs> But um, give me your comments. I want to know what you think. I really loved all the feedback that I got on the first Kill Team video where I was just talking about the fact that it had been announced. It was fantastic. And you may have noticed I reply to everything. I'm really interested in everything. Even if you're rude, I reply to you. <laughs> Usually with a smiley face. I don't care if you're rude. I prefer if you weren't rude. But if you do, I don't take it that seriously because everyone has a bad day. But if you've got a bad day, just stop before you're right. Just think, oh, do I really want to just vent my spleen on this poor guy who's just making videos for free? And okay, I don't agree with him, but perhaps there's a way I can express my disagreement in a, in a nicer, more friendly, more communicative kind of way. So we can start a discussion together and perhaps work out our differences in a very adult, measured and polite way. See, that's not too much to ask. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be able to show you this stuff. And I will see you next time on the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the website, orderofgamers.com. There's a heap of stuff there for you to enjoy. Rules, summaries, and references to download. Uh, there's 500 or more, more than 500 videos on this channel to watch. And check me out on social media. And I've got a Discord channel and a Patreon channel as well if you want to support me. See you next time. Good gaming, everyone. Bye.